But I think one of the reasons why these people have this deep-seated anger and resentment is there's a bunch of people out there that have these lives that are deeply unsatisfying. Because I think there are so many people that are working all day long doing something that is deeply unsatisfying and, and almost painful. Yeah, soul killing. Soul killing. Yeah. They're stuck in traffic all day, and then they're stuck in a cubicle after that. They, 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 they relish the time to take a sh in the bathroom and look at their phone. I mean, they literally do that. That's a, a highlight of someone's day. They get in traffic on the way home. They get home after that, they're watching television, and they're... F you ever notice that some people seem to want to hang on to stuff that is bothering them? They're forever talking about it. They don't want to let it go. They've had a, a, a failure at something and it's grown. They can't get over it. They just can't get over it. Or somebody said something nasty to them. They don't want to let it go. Do you know what we should do? We should ask ourselves, everything that happens, is this serving you? Is this serving you? And if it's not serving you, get rid of it. You don't want anything in your life that's not serving you, that's not causing you to grow, that's not adding to the quality of your life. I don't care what it is. You will find some people, they just hold on to bad stuff. They hold on to problems. They don't want to seem to let it go. And that adds more problems. Whatever you focus on grows. The only thing that can grow is the thing you give energy to. Why would you hold on to anything that's not serving you? How bad does it have to get? I mean, to what denominator, to what lowest level do you have to reach before people really make up their mind to change? My message is, why wait? I mean, yeah. when you're feeling so altered emotionally, you feel so bad, that's the moment you could actually see yourself for the first time because you're, you're not you're answering your cell phone, you're not responding to all your texts, you're not watching TV, you're not going out to dinners, you're not calling people back. You're, something's altered in you and you're starting to become self-aware, right? How dare you to analyze yourself first, your company first, your character, your behavior, your, 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 your work ethics. How dare you to analyze it and see if there's any change you can make. See, you cannot manage time, but you can manage activity. You can manage your activities. Make certain that what you're doing really makes a difference. Make certain that you're spending your time on activities that are productive, that are taking you in the direction of your goal. If you think about the person that you want to become, what's that person do every day that you don't do right now? And when you start to do the thing that the person you want to become is doing, you leverage something called behavioral activation therapy. And that is a whole body of research that says when you act like the person you want to become, it's the most powerful way to change a habit. It's even uh, better therapy than uh, talk therapy because the action proves to your brain that you're becoming that person. You're seeing the change through the action and so then the brain catches up and starts to relate to you like a person that's confident or a person who adores their appearance or a person that celebrates themselves exactly as they are. Before you start the day, ask yourself, what, how do I want to think today? How do I want to feel? How do I want to behave? I mean, what would greatness look like? What would love look like today? What could I do that would be really cool for me at the end of the day, say, wow, so I had a good day today. What, it, what, what would make me feel that way? And if you can't find an answer to that, start reading. Who reads anymore? Read a book. I read so many books a week. I know, I'm that way too. So <laughs> read something about, you want to be wealthy? Read a book about someone who became wealthy and get get real and realize they may have failed 50 times before they actually pulled it off or what were their characteristics what were their traits what made them it's not it wasn't about their wealth it was about who they became that's the key right so 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 fill your brain with a little knowledge and then just start asking yourself what's the greatest expression of myself that I can be today and 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 rehearse it rehearse how you're gonna be and and then if, if it leads to a different choice that's the unknown mm -hmm. and just know that it's not gonna be predictable it's gonna be a little uncomfortable that's where the magic happens if you can stay relaxed and awake in the unknown things get pretty exciting when you're back to the known you're back to the familiar don't expect anything to change in your life and if you say it's that person or that circumstance ah, you defaulted and went back to the program of the victim allowing your outer environment controlling your thoughts and feelings if you truly do this well 
This is what I discovered. If I truly feel the feelings of my future before they occur, and I live in that state, I'm no longer looking for it to happen. How could I look for it if I feel like it already has, right? So I try to stay in that state because then, I don't, then I'm not separate from it. Uh, and that tends to be when the magic happens. There, there's no control anymore. There's no predicting. There's no perfectionism. There's none of. There, all there is is just kind of an experiment. Like I'm experimenting to see if I change my thoughts and feelings, if my yeah. life will change. And that should be the experiment everybody has. And 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 do it with with curiosity and do it with just seeing if if the experiment works. If it doesn't, yeah. change something else about yourself until it starts to work. Deciding who are we going to be. You know, we, we shouldn't hope to end up one day a magnificent, strong, beautiful, capable, kind, loving person. We should start living like that today, hopefully, so that we become that. That who we become is not a, a, an accident, but hopefully a purposeful intent. That our days and how we approach our days are literally driven by the intention of who we're going to bring. That we bring our character into each of the circumstances of our lives and by doing that, maybe we can't always direct every circumstance of our life. We can't control everything, but we can certainly control our responses to them. We can certainly dictate who we're gonna be in those circumstances, and that helps us achieve our ultimate destiny that we desire, not one that just lands on us. I think the other thing that really comes to people's, um, into their power is when they really discover that, you know, each of our days is something that we can also design. Not just design who you're gonna be, how are you gonna design your day? What's this day gonna be about? What's gonna get your attention? What's gonna get your focus? And what should not be getting your focus is just your inbox or just what I call browser blackout, clicking around on all these blue links or images or swiping here and swiping there and then losing four or five hours of your day. Because what ends up happening for so many people is they lose two or three hours of distraction each day, maybe four hours of distraction of television a day. And over the course of their lives, now a decade is gone of opportunity, a decade of op missed opportunities to connect with your family, to achieve your dreams, to work a little harder, to contribute that thing you always contribute, to learn that skill that you wanted to learn. Like We have to decide on our days. We have to design them. We have to wake up and decide what this day is going to be about, what's going to get done, what's going to deserve our focus, who will we reach out to instead of just responding to everybody else's needs. Look back over your life and ask yourself, what activities, behaviors, or decisions have been most responsible for my success in life to date? You will probably find that less than 5% of the things that you have said or done have accounted for most of the success you have enjoyed. You may find that it was your unique ability to solve a particular kind of problem or to take advantage of a particular type of opportunity. You may find that your special talent was an interpersonal skill that enabled you to influence and persuade other people at a particular time and place. You may find on analysis that it was an ability to take charge and accept responsibility for accomplishing a particular goal. Whatever has been responsible for your successes in life to date may be a good indication what you should be doing in the future. Analyze your work based on the measure that I call return on energy. Leaders in every field deliberately apply their talents and energies where they can achieve their greatest return on the amount of energy, mental, emotional, and physical, that they invest in any endeavor. They refuse to take on jobs or work in areas where they cannot perform at exceptional levels. They treat themselves as valuable resources and they spend their energies very carefully. One of the questions that you might continually ask yourself is, is this the best possible use of my time and energy? Is what you are doing right now the most valuable thing that you could be doing, given your particular combination of talents and abilities? Often answering this question will help you to see that there is a vast difference between what you are currently doing and what you should be doing if you want to be fulfilling more of your potential. Once you have chosen your ideal job or occupation for this stage of your career, your biggest responsibility is to make the decision to become very good and then to become excellent at what you do. In a lengthy study on successful Americans, the Gallup organization discovered that expertise or being recognized by your peers as one of the very best in your field was one of the essential ingredients for success in American life. We said before that that self-confidence comes from positive knowing rather than positive thinking.
It is only when you know that you are outstanding in your chosen field that you really feel terrific about yourself and that you enjoy high levels of self, confidence. Men and women who are good at what they do and who know that they are good at what they do are very different from those who are only average. They walk and talk and dress and behave differently. They have an attitude of assurance and certainty about themselves that causes them to stand out in any group. They have a deep down sense of self, worth and self-confidence that is evident to everyone around them. The quality of a person's life is in direct proportion to their commitment to excellence, no matter what their chosen field is.